Shall I start? Shall I start? Dear PWNs, I am Dr. Sharad Balaji, going to discuss about some hundred good practical points for your examination. Here, let us go to our first question. So, what is the first question? Perinatal period refers to 22 weeks to 7 days after birth, 28 weeks to 7 days after birth, 22 weeks to 14 days after birth, and 22 weeks to 14 days after birth. So, what is the correct choice? Previously, it was previously it was 22 weeks. Previously, it was 28 weeks of gestation to 7 days after birth. But right now, because of the improvement in so many technologies, non-invasive ventilation, after the introduction of surfactant, CPAP, everything, the longevity has been increased. So, even very preterms can be saved right now. As a result of which, perinatal period has been extended from 28 weeks to 28 weeks to 22 weeks. Previously, we could save only 28 weeks gestational baby. But right now, we can save even children who are born from 22 weeks of gestational age. So, the answer for this question, perinatal period refers to not this one. This one is old one. This is not the correct answer. The correct answer is perinatal period extends from 22 weeks of gestational age to 7 days after birth. This point is not new, but majority of books have not updated it so far. The answer for first question is perinatal period extends from 22 weeks of gestation to 7 days after birth. What is the second question? Adolescency extends from A. 10 to 19 years B. 10 to 21 years, C, 15 to 19 years, and D, 19 to 19 years. Can anyone try? Very good. Adolescency means it is 10 to 19 years. I repeat, adolescency means 10 to 19 years. It will be divided into early adolescency, middle adolescency, and then late adolescency. Early adolescency means 10 to 13 years. Middle adolescency means 14 to 17 years. Whereas late adolescency means 17 to 19 years. Then some might be asking what is called youth, what is called young. Youth means 15 to 24 years of age. Whereas young means 10 to 24 years of age. So, in this scenario, you need to know what do you mean by adolescency? Adolescency means 10 to 19 years. These choices are all wrong. This is our second question. I repeat, adolescency means 10 to 19 years. Third question, lymphoid growth is maximum at dash years. Tell me, is it 0 to 19 years? 4 to 19 years, 8 to 12 years, and 0 to 4 years. Please remember, the lymphoid growth is maximum at 4 to 8 years. I repeat, lymphoid growth is maximum at 4 to 8 years. That's why you will get tonsil and you will get adenoid in children between 4 to 8 years. 
This is the normal physiological growth. That's why you need to see a tonsil whenever you examine a oral cavity and whenever any child between 4 to 8 years comes to you with the snoring and mouth breathing, you need to think in terms of exaggerated increase in size of the adenoid gland in the nasopharynx. I repeat, the maximum lymphoid growth is between 4 to 8 years of age. After that, it will start regressing. Also, you need to know that the maximum head circumference, at least 90% of adult head circumference is attained in the first two years of life. In the first two years of life. Second MCQ you need to know. Third, somatic growth. What will be the somatic growth? Somatic growth is rapid in the first two years of life. Then up to puberty, it attains a plateau. Again, it will show a exponential growth by about puberty. This is the graph of a child whose somatic growth will look like this. And finally, what about the gonadal age? What about the gonadal age? The gonadal age will look like this because up to puberty, up to puberty, it will be normal. But after puberty, the gonadal growth increases in size. As far as MCQs are concerned, lymphoid growth is maximum at 4 to 8 years. One, second one is head circumference of adult size is achieved at, at almost 90% of the head circumference are achieved at 2 years of life. I repeat, 2 years of life. So, two MCQs in this question. Third one, at dash years, it was explained, head size of the child is 90% of the expected head size in adults. It was just told to you, the answer is, what is the answer? The answer is 2 years. I repeat, the answer is 2 years. Okay, what is the normal head circumference? The normal head circumference is 35 centimeter at birth. Then it becomes 2 centimeter per month in the first three months then one centimeter per month between three months to six months then 0.5 centimeter per month between six months to one year and 0.25 centimeter per month between one to two years so this is the normal increment in the Head size. I repeat, at two years, head size is 90% of the expected head size in adults, which comes around 52 centimeter. Okay, right. This is our second, this is our third question. What is this? The following hormone, the next question, the following hormone does not play a role in fetal growth. Does not, the question is, does not play a role in fetal growth. Point number one, thyroxine. Whenever the fetus is deficient of thyroxine, it will land up in cretinism. It will land up in mental retardation. It will land up in epiphyseal dysgenesis. So, thyroxine plays a role in fetal growth. Insulin. You all know infant of diabetic mother are prone for Infants of diabetic mother are prone for so many things. They are large for dead babies because insulin increase, increase, insulin is an anabolic hormone. This anabolic hormone increases all tissues of the body. So, insulin play a role in fetal growth. Glucocorticoids, you all know that antenatal steroids increases, causes maturity of the surfactant. So, it also plays a role. Growth hormone do not play a role in fetal growth. It plays a role mainly during the childhood period. That's why a fetus who is deficient of growth hormone will have a normal height and normal weight at birth. The only manifestation of 
growth hormone deficiency during growth hormone deficiency in the neonatal period is hypoglycemia is hypoglycemia whereas all other things of growth hormone deficiency will not be evident in the fetal period that's why i repeat among all these four choices your growth hormone do not play a role in fetal growth i repeat growth hormone do not play a role in fetal growth next question head circumference and chest circumference ratio is 1 at which year it's very very simple normally head circumference is otherwise known as occipito frontal what is that head circumference is nothing but occipito frontal circumference it is normally 35 cm and the chest circumference is usually measured at the level of the nipple at the measure, measured at the level of the nipple in mid inspiration usually at birth head circumference is more at birth head circumference will be more than chest circumference but at one year head circumference will be equivalent to chest circumference so the answer for this question is one year head circumference and chest circumference ratio is one at one year next question mid parental height of a child born to your ma born to not your mother i'm sorry born to a mother of 150 cm and father of 170 cm is how to calculate mid parental height the formula for mid parental height is height of mother divided by 2 plus height of father divided by 2 if it is a boy you need to add plus 6.5 cm if it is a girl you need to minus 6.5 cm so what is the formula as such my father height divided by 2 170 divided by 2 plus mother height divided by 2 how much does it come around this is 85 cm and this is 75 cm so how much does it come around 160 cm so if it is a boy plus 6.5 cm if it is a girl minus 6.5 cm here the question is girl so 160 minus 6.5 is 153.7 cm i repeat mid parental height is father height divided by 2 plus mother height divided by 2 Plus 6.5 centimeter in case of boys and minus 6.5 centimeter in case of girls. Next question: Arm span is equal to height at one year. At which year? I am sorry. What is this? At which year? See, head circumference is equal to chest circumference at one year. But your arm span is equal becomes. equal to height by about which year it is about 11 years i repeat arm span equal to height by about 11 years chest circumference is equal to head circumference at one year arm span equal to height by about 11 years next question a boy with a small testes and small penis and short stature at 12 years becomes normal at 22 years the diagnosis is so what is the diagnosis a boy with a small testis and small penis and short stature at 12 years so initially he is short by about 2 year 22 years everything becomes normal what is this condition called this condition is called as constitutional growth delay we all know that in one of our question we had discussed that final increment in height is attained at puberty final increment in height is attained at puberty if puberty occurs by about 11 to 14 years your final increment in height will occur at 18 years but if puberty is postponed to 18 years what will happen the final height will achieved will further go 
beyond some years for example four years that's why whenever you have delay in puberty your increment in the height age will also be delayed this is called constitutional growth delay initially they will be short with a small penis and small testes because testosterone secretion has not happened but it usually instead of occurring at 14 years if it occurs at 14 to 19 years what will happen the final increment the height achieved will be seen in college rather than in plus 2 usually it runs in families usually father will also have the same kind of history so you need to ask that history to the father when does he started shaving first when does he had seen his mush bird everything so when initially when the child is short but later short normal increment in height particularly if it is a boy you need to think in terms of a constitutional growth delay in growth hormone deficiency and thyroid deficiency final height achieved will be less in familial short stature also final height achieved will be less next question growth hormone can be given in chronic kidney disease to achieve height see remember growth hormone can be given in in many condition growth hormone can be given in many condition okay what are all the conditions in which growth hormone can be given one growth hormone can be given in chronic kidney disease point number one it increases increment in height in children with chronic kidney disease two turner syndrome people started using growth hormone small for gestational age growth hormone can be used whereas in familial short stature even when you give growth hormone they will not show increment in height so the answer is growth hormone cannot be used or growth hormone utilization in familial short stature will not lead to increment in height so the answer is turner syndrome small for gestational age chronic kidney disease in all these conditions you can use but not in familial short stature next question a boy with mild mental retardation weakness involving right upper and lower limb tall compared to age he is said to have what said to have what if you say fibrillin gene thinking that it is a case of marfan syndrome remember in marfan syndrome you will get you will not get mental retardation in marfan syndrome you will not get any hemiplegia or monoplegia they will be tall so this cannot be the answer in men syndrome usually they will have increase in, in they will have morphonoid habitus but majority of them are characterized by tumors involving endocrine gland here we don't have such history antithrombin mutation again in antithrombin mutation you can get the excess arterial and venous thrombosis causing weakness of limbs but mental retardation will not occur tall stature cannot occur so what does it mean the triad of mild mental retardation weakness due to stroke and morphonoid habitus is a characteristic feature of homocystinuria is a characteristic feature of homocystinuria this homocystin produces arterial and venous thrombosis leading to stroke and because of this frequent mental retardation and they will have morphonoid feature so the answer for this question is plasma homocysteine levels or urine homocysteine levels what is a drug of choice we don't have enzyme replacement therapy but we can use pyridoxine we can use pyridoxine in homocystinuria in pyridoxine as a cofactor replacement in pyridoxine resistant cases people started utilizing bt betaine what is called betaine betaine is called substrate reduction therapy when you give betaine it will combine with homocysteine and the product will be excreted in the urine this is called substrate reduction therapy next question a child learns to use his fingers before hands 
reasoning development progresses in near cephalocaudal direction what do you mean by cephalocaudal direction head control achieves before neck control neck control achieves before trunk control trunk control achieves before uh, pelvic girdle control so this is called cephalocaudal when you take arms shoulder joint your arm control before elbow elbow control before wrist wrist control before fingers so it occurs in cephalocaudal direction so b is correct reasoning is correct reasoning is correct but a child learns to use finger before hands but this one is contradictory see the child has to use his limb then only it can use his fingers if the child uses fingers without using wrist or hand what will be the benefit of this milestone achievement nothing so assertion is wrong reasoning is correct so the answer must be c okay then match the following crawling creeping object permanence crawling usually achieves in at eight months i repeat crawling means at eight months crawling means abdomen on the ground abdomen touches the ground creeping creeping means what abdomen of the ground abdomen doesn't touch creeping occurs at 10 months 10 months crawling 8 months creeping 10 months object permanence object permanence means you show some object to the infant and then you throw it the infant try to look and search the object that was showed to him this is called object permanence object permanence means knowing that there is an object even though when it is not seen object permanence usually occurs by about nine months by about nine months and finally so a crawling occurs by about eight months creeping occurs by about three months object permanence occurs at about ten at about nine months nine months okay at about nine months nine months and hit 45 degree up in prone position when you put the child in prone position the child used to lift the chin 45 degrees at eight weeks so d one so a4 d3 c2 okay d1 so a is the correct answer Bear walk occurs at bear walk usually occurs at 12 months. Walking like a bear, just like creeping, occurs at 12 months. Hand regard beyond dash weeks is abnormal. Any child between 12 to 20 weeks will bring the hands together and look at and look the hand. Okay. Uh, it usually occurs between 12 to 20 weeks if it crosses 20 weeks if it crosses 20 weeks it is said to be abnormal so answer is a by dash months a child can feed well using a spoon usually the child can feed himself with a cup and spoon by 18 months spoon by 18 months answer a A child can draw a cylinder by dash years. You all know three years circle, four years rectangle or square, five years triangle, two years vertical stroke and horizontal stroke. When does a child draw a cylinder? Remember, a child can draw a cylinder at nine years and a cube at 11 years so the answer for this question it is not here a child can draw a cylinder by about i repeat nine years which was not given in this option just to check you okay right a child can use pronouns by dash years what do you mean by pronouns i me you they are called pronouns usually pronouns the child used to you utilize all these words by about two years. Pronoun by about two years. 
WHO recommends avoiding all screen timing in children up to dash years, up to 24 months. I repeat, up to 24 months, WHO do not recommend screen timing in children up to 2 years, except video chatting, except video chatting with relatives, grannies. Because majority of grandparents are living abroad, away from their country. So video chatting is a form of communication. Except video chatting, WHO does not recommend screen timing in children up to 2 years. Autism is characterized by what? What do you mean by autism? Eye to eye contact will not be there. Communication will not be there and the stereotypic movements will be there. In communication, there are two types of communication. What do you mean by that? One is verbal communication. When you love someone, you can say, I love you. But what type of non-verbal communication? When you love your girl, you just have a look at this girl. Okay, this is called non-verbal communication. In autism, both verbal and non-verbal communication will not be there. So, impairment of verbal communication will be there. Stereotypic and restrictive pattern of behavior. What does it mean? If you give this pen to the child, a, a normal child will play with this pen for about 5 minutes and then throw it and take this touch. But when you give the same pen to your uh, autistic kid, the child used to play with this pen for about hours together. This is called restricted behavioral pattern. So, what does it mean? Here, non-verbal communication is intact, not at all. Non-verbal communication is also lost in case of autism. And finally, onset before three years is correct. So, what is the wrong answer? The wrong answer is even non-verbal communication is also lost. Answer B. Dash are common in REM sleep disorder. You all know that sleepwalking, confusional arousals and sleep terrors are the parasomnias present in non-REM sleep. Sleepwalking, confusional arousal, night terror are in non-REM sleep whereas the only Parasomnia that occur in REM sleep is nightmare. REM sleep is nightmare. So, REM sleep is characterized by nightmare, whereas sleep walking, confusional arousal, sleep terror are common in non REM sleep. Distractions and time out techniques are useful for distraction and time out technique are useful for temper tantrums. You need to just observe the child doing its tantrum because whenever you give an undue importance to the tantrum, the child will get that behavior lifelong. As a result of which, whenever child wants this pen and I am not giving, the child used to throw tantrums. What do you need to do? You give this pen, that is what the child wants, but take 5 to 10 minutes and then give. So, over a period of the time, the child will understand that this fellow is not going to give this pen or else even if he wants to give, he will take at least 10 minutes. The child will think, why should I cry for about 10 minutes? As a result of it, it will stop crying. It will stop throwing tantrums. So, time out procedure is mainly meant for temper tantrums. Answer. Pick out the wrong statement. Thumb sucking is normal below 5 years. Answer is yes. Stuttering is normal below 5 years. Yes. Pika means eating non-edible things for more than 2 months. It is not 2 months my dear. It is 1 month. Pika is eating non-edible things for more than 1 month. Breath holding spell. The child cries, 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 cries. Taking out all the air inside and going for hypoxic posturing. Going for hypoxic posturing. In those instances, you need to rule out two things. Take an EEG and rule out seizure. Take an ECG and rule out congenital QT prolongation syndrome. 
The answer for this is pika means eating not edible things for more than one month. Okay, what is this? Boys develop growth spurt by tanner staging two and three. Girls develop growth spurt by tanner staging two and three. Remember, tanner means puberty occur over a period of five years. For example, ten to fifteen years, and it is divided into tanner stage. One, two, three, four, and then five. There are five stages. Usually, girls grow faster. That's why girl will attain puberty earlier, and girls will attain increase in height earlier. So I can say growth spurt occurs by stage through two and three in case of girls, whereas boys attain puberty or growth spurt late. So growth spurt in case of boys takes place at three and four, whereas growth spurt occurs in case of stage two and three in case of girls. So girls develop growth spurt by tanner stage two and three is correct, whereas boys develop growth spurt by it is not two and three, it is three and four. So B is correct. Answer is this one. Okay. Responsibility for crime is from twelve years. Is from twelve years. The vaccine that should be given every ten years. Please, what is the answer? The vaccine that should be given every ten years is. Please do not opt for DPT. It is given at five years. PT previously before diphtheria outbreak in two thousand seventeen or eighteen. After diphtheria outbreak in many parts of India, instead of TT, people started giving capital T, tetanus, and small D, smaller doses of diphtheria. So it is TD vaccine. I repeat, every ten years, TT has been replaced by TD vaccine. Answer is A. Right. Maintenance fluid requirement in a 22 kg old boy is close to. So this is called holiday seeker formula. This is called holiday seeker formula. First 10 kgs, 100 ml per kg. So how much it how much it comes around 1000 ml. Next 10 to 20 kgs. How much? Fifty ml per kg. So how much? Five hundred. Next beyond twenty kgs, you will get twenty ml per kg. So for a twenty-two kg, two into twenty forty. So how much does it come around? Thousand five hundred and forty ml per meter square. This is called holiday cigar formula. Close to it, answer is C. Close to its answer is C. Holiday Seeker formula is very very important. Development question below dash age is taken as delay that warrants evaluation. So what is meant by development delay? For example, let me take head control. Head control. Okay, head control usually attains by about three months. So average age of attainment. Numerator average age of attainment is numerator divided by observed age of attainment divided by observed age of attainment. So average age, for example, three months your child should attain head control, but your child attains by six months. So what is the answer? Three by six into hundred. So it comes around fifty percentage. So development question for head control in this child is fifty percent. But the question is below which age is taken as delay that warrants evaluation? It is seventy percent. Development question of less than seventy percent is taken as delay. Most common cause for congenital hypothyroidism is endemic iodine deficiency. False. Most common cause is thyroid dysgenesis. I repeat, 
most common cause for congenital hypothyroidism is thyroid dysgenesis whereas this endemic iodine so in this case what will happen when there is thyroid dysgenesis usg will not show that is absent thyroid absent thyroid in usg ultrasound neck whereas when you have goitrous hypothyroidism goitrous hypothyroidism symptoms of hypothyroidism but the child is having goiter in these three conditions you will get goitrous hypothyroidism you will get you will get goitrous hypothyroidism endemic iodine deficiency maternal antithyroid drugs and dishormonogenesis are the causes for goitrous hypothyroidism sam means last less than dash centile what do you mean by sam bilateral pedal edema mid upper arm circumference less than 11.5 cm obvious severe wasting and it is weight for height less than minus 3 standard deviation weight for height so the answer is a vaccination at 9 months include all except so what are all the vaccinations that is given at 9 months they are japanese encephalitis or japanese encephalitis first dose opv booster measles rubella first dose pcv booster and then recently people had introduced ipv booster so these are all the vaccine is vaccination that is given at 9 months ipv booster je pcv it is not dpt dpt is usually given at 6 weeks 10 weeks 14 weeks 15 months and then 5 years which vaccine dpt what is the vaccine that is given at 10 years td after that every 10 years td okay right the following is stored in the middle compartment the following vaccine is stored in middle compartment middle compartment remember the first freezer in freezer opv and immediately below freezer you will measles containing vaccine and bcg middle compartment your dpt your dpt your typhoid your tt your td okay your hib your pneumococcal conjugate vaccine rotavirus all stored in the middle compartment and lower compartment varicella and then hepatitis b whereas nothing should be stored in the door so middle compartment which is which vaccine is stored in the middle compartment bcg and the mmr below the freezer compartment opv in the freezer compartment so in middle compartment dpt answer d giant granules in neutrophils in a child with albinism is chediac igashi syndrome a triad of albinism giant granules in neutrophils and recurrent pneumonia is a feature of chediac igashi syndrome what is the treatment for chediac igashi syndrome one is bone marrow transplant second is high dose vitamin c vitamin c another point what happens in chediac igashi syndrome defective phagolysosome defective phagolysosome match the following precocious puberty in boy is mainly due to hypothalamic hematoma 1c precocious puberty in girls are usually constitutional 2 a delayed puberty in boy is usually due to again constitutional 
it can be you can say idiopathic also and finally and finally delayed puberty in girl is is unless otherwise proved turner syndrome so precocious puberty in boy hypothalamic hematoma precocious puberty in girl is usually idiopathic delayed puberty in boy is usually due to constitutional growth delay and finally delayed puberty in girl is due to turner syndrome for that you will check ovary so this is the correct answer very very important precocious puberty in boy means testicular enlargement before 10 years i repeat testicular enlargement before 10 years whereas precocious puberty in girl means thelarchy before 8 years whereas delayed puberty in boys and girls is absence of secondary sexual characters by 14 years right match the following rickets with alopecia you all know that rickets with alopecia is mainly due to vitamin d resistant rickets type 2 so a 2 ataxia the vitamin deficiency that leads to ataxia is vitamin e hemolysis in preterm excess vitamin which leads to hemolysis in preterm is vitamin k and finally recurrent pneumonia is a manifestation of vitamin d and vitamin a deficiency so the answer is a answer is a lytic lesions in bone chronic draining year years and early eruption of teeth occurs in lytic lesions of bone occurs in three condition one is lch second one is neuroblastoma one is lch second one is neuroblastoma third one is acute lymphatic leukemia but here early eruption of teeth also occurs in acute leukemia but here chronic draining years it is more common in langerhansel histiocytosis it is more common in langerhansel histiocytosis cell histiocytosis the answer is c along with that you will have seborrheic dermatitis along with that you will have seborrheic dermatitis in lch neonatal seizure with the worst prognosis is subtle seizure is the most common seizure chronic seizure is usually due to stroke tonic seizure is usually due to intraventricular hemorrhage myoclonic seizure is due to inborn error of metabolism best prognosis is chronic seizure myoclonic seizure worst prognosis most common cause for neonatal seizure is hie hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy a neonate presented with bilious vomiting x-ray showing paucity of gas what is the answer bilious vomiting is a feature of mal rotation with the valvulus i repeat bilious vomiting is a feature of mal rotation with the valvulus duodenal atresia non bilious vomiting jejunal atresia bilious with multiple air fluid level multiple air fluid levels hypertrophic stenosis again non bilious vomiting usually it occurs by 4 weeks in a boy persistent vomiting with the gasless abdomen is mal rotation and valvulus choose the correct option the following requires high risk newborn follow up care except okay gestational age less than 34 weeks preterm yes you need because they are prone for hmd apgar score less than 3 at 5 minutes yes hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy small for dead babies are prone for hypoglycemia 
it is not thousand it is not two thousand grams i risk means it is less than thousand eight hundred grams intensified mission indra dhanush covers the following vaccine rota pneumococcal japanese yes it is not hepatitis a initially they had included bcg opv diphtheria pertussis tetanus hepatitis b later on it was included hip pneumococcal conjugate rota and ipv so far in so far indra dhanush do not include hepatitis a the following vaccine is kept in freezer compartment it was already discussed opv measles these in the second compartment are below the freezer compartment shed test is often used to determine the ability of the following vaccine remember your t containing vaccines particularly pentavalent should not be stored should not be frozen if it frozen it loses its potency potency how to check that shake test shake test take it shake it and then keep it if there is uniform dispersal it is viable but instead if there is a sediment formation in the bottom it is non viable discard it shake test is meant for dpt vaccine as well as pentavalent vaccine as well as hepatitis b shake test bcg can be stored in freezer so it is not for bcg bcg is wrong the first three choices are correct the following are features of multi system inflammatory syndrome in children associated with covid except what is this multi system inflammatory syndrome it resembles kawasaki like disease following covid infection covid infection it is characterized by maculopapular rash like kawasaki bilateral non purulent conjunctivitis like kawasaki elevated inflammatory markers like procalcitonin esr crp yes streptococcal grown in culture you need to rule out streptococcal and staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome for multi system inflammatory syndrome associated with covid the wrong choice is streptococcal growth in culture it should be ruled out before diagnosing a case of misc multi system inflammatory disease associated with covid next question a 7 year old child brought with fever and a headache tonsillar exudate generalized lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly along with the new onset snoring so what is the diagnosis whenever any child comes with fever headache and tonsillar exudate invariably you will think in terms of streptococcal pharyngitis but streptococcal pharyngitis will not be associated with generalized lymphadenopathy will not be associated with the splenomegaly so what is the answer it is epstein bar virus so what is the thing about epstein bar virus epstein bar virus increases the lymph node proliferation almost throughout the body if it increases your adena if your adenoid size is increased it can be treated by giving intranasal steroids if ebv induced autoimmune thrombocytopenia occurs you can give oral steroids and the diagnostic method of choice is igm vca diagnostic method of choice is igm for vca whereas we don't give any antivirals like a cyclovir we don't give any antivirals like a cyclovir answer is b we don't use antivirals the following are criteria for severe dengue except shock yes 
respiratory distress yes deranged lft yes even though thrombocytopenia indicates dengue it doesn't come under severe dengue severe dengue means shock respiratory distress coagulopathy due to deranged lft thrombocytopenia is a manifestation of dengue i agree but not severe dengue the answer is d except match the following complication versus pneumo with the organisms causing pneumonia pyothorax pus a it can be due to both staphylococcus and streptococcus but more in favor of staph b consolidation is a feature of pneumococcus the child is non toxic means walking pneumonia mycoplasma and finally viral produces interstitial pattern so a4 b3 c2 d1 is the answer thank you the following are true about clinical criteria for whooping cough except whooping cough should be suspected when any children with a cough lasting for more than 2 weeks along with paroxysmal cough <laughs> sudden cough then it disappears post acute vomiting coughing 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 vomiting apnea in infants yes and then high pitch expiratory sound how does a whoop look like <laughs> this not expiratory it is inspiratory sound whoop is inspiratory so for this question wrong answer is it is high pitched inspiratory and not expiratory sound the following antimicrobial therapy for enteric fever or antimicrobial therapy for enteric fever remember for op practice you can use cefixim and azithromycin for ip practice you can use ceftriaxone and astreonam all choices are correct a b c d all are correct op cefixim azithromycin ip ceftriaxone astreonam a 2 year old boy next question a 2 year old boy presenting with fever of one week duration along with hepatomegaly maculopapular rash with the gangrene of digits and toes the drug of choice is remember whenever a child comes with rash hepatom splenomegaly gangrene gangrene means what vasculitis it is nothing but scrub typhus and it is usually associated with sr a black area where the tick bite scrub typhus sr and usually total count will be normal but your esr will be high your crp will be high and platelet will be low the most characteristic feature is sr you will see black pigmentation in the area where tick had bitten you the drug of choice is azithromycin not it is not azithromycin azithromycin is the second drug of choice the drug of choice is doxycycline 2 mg per kg per dose twice daily into 5 days refractory constipation is said to be present when there is no response to medication so recently the drug of choice is pick pg is the drug of choice for constipation and we say refractory constipation when pg doesn't work for more than 3 months refractory constipation is said to be present when pg doesn't work for more than 3 months next question convulsions associated with the diarrhea may be due to the following whenever any child with a diarrhea throws convulsion it can be due to cerebral venous thrombosis caused by diarrheal dehydration it can be due to hypoglycemia it can be due to hyponatremia 
or it can also be due to hypocalcemia all choices are correct next question the treatment of persistent diarrhea includes all the following persistent diarrhea means post infective diarrhea lasting for more than 2 weeks in that there are three types of diet followed diet a diet b and diet c what is diet a plan because in prolonged diarrhea you will lose the brush border enzymes lactase so that a secondary lactose intolerance will develop so in diet a plan they will reduce the milk intake to half they will see whether there is a response or not if there is no response they will go to diet b diet b means lactose free diet no milk at all and finally what is diet c diet c means monosaccharide based diet in which you will give predominantly egg albumin and um soup chicken soup mutton soup etc completely avoiding not only your lactose but also starch this is diet c plan which also includes unripe banana so the treatment of diarrhea includes all the following next match the following diarrheal causes a 7 month old child with rectal bleeding failure to thrive and skin rashes usually it is a manifestation of cow milk intolerance second a 2 month old child non pitting edema anasarca and low albumin it indicates that the child is losing albumin through the gut it occurs in lymphangiectasia a 5 month old child with oily stools and recurrent pneumonia right now we have been diagnosing so many cases of cystic fibrosis and finally a 2 month old child with persistent pneumonia persistent diarrhea and absolute lymphocyte count of of absolute lymphocyte count of less than 500 cells indicate what is that severe combined immuno deficiency so match the color that is the answer next question the following liver tumor regresses after propranolol therapy it is hemangio endothelioma match the following hereditary hyperbilirubinemias let us see Crigler Najjar syndrome type one in which there will not be any conjugatory enzymes. So for this one, they usually die by eighteen to twenty-four months. Second, Dubin Johnson syndrome. You all know it is characterized by black, brown, black pigment. Brown, black pigment. Rotar syndrome again, unconjugated. Rotar syndrome is. unconjugated dubin johnson syndrome crickler najjar syndrome and gilbert syndrome unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia whereas dubin johnson syndrome and rotar syndrome is conjugated hyperbilirubinemia with pigmentation means dubin johnson without pigmentation means rotar syndrome i in finally crickler najjar type syndrome usually responds to type 2 usually respond to phenobarbitone match the color usually responds to phenobarbitone type 2 usually responds to phenobarbitone so match the color that is the answer disturb sleep wake cycle and occasional asterixis in which stage of hepatic encephalopathy you all know the first stage is characterized by altered sleep wake cycle they will sleep in the morning and wake up in the night but here the question is that tremor when does it comes that tremor when does it comes it comes in stage 2 so both comes means the answer is stage 2 
the most common cause for portal hypertension in india throughout the world it is cirrhosis but in india it is due to extra hepatic portal venous obstruction without affecting your liver neonatal cholestasis in a breastfed baby should be investigated for bilirubin estimation beyond dash weeks of postnatal age in breastfed babies you need to work up for neonatal cholestasis when it when the jaundice crosses more than 3 weeks breast milk jaundice can last up to 3 weeks so breastfeeding babies wait for 3 weeks but bottle fed babies if they are jaundice you need to go for bilirubin estimation when it is more than 2 weeks here the question is breastfed baby you need to opt for third week to look for whether it is a direct bilirubin or indirect bilirubin indirect bilirubin means you need to rule out hemolysis direct bilirubin means it can be either extra hepatic biliary atresia or neonatal cholestasis or polydocal cyst for this question the answer is 3 weeks as per who anemia in a 8 year old is less than remember less than 11 grams less than 11.5 grams less than 12 grams so less than 4 years 5 to 12 years and more than 12 years is the answer here the question is 8 years so what is it it is less than 11.5 grams per deciliter definition for anemia in a 8 year old next question the following are causes for microcytic hypochromic anemia remember i'll give you a clue iron lust is the clue for microcytic hypochromic anemia iron uh, mcv less than 70 femtoliter so iron deficiency anemia lead poisoning copper cu copper deficiency s for sideroblastic anemia and t for thalassemia and t for thalassemia so iron lust you need to remember iron deficiency anemia thalassemia lead poisoning copper deficiency answer all a b c d e answer all next megaloblastic anemia is seen in the following remember mcv more than 100 femtoliter is macrocytic anemia in macrocytic anemia you will have megaloblastic non megaloblastic megaloblastic means neutrophil contain more than 6 lobes the answer is b12 folate orotic aciduria orotic aciduria so megaloblastic anemia is seen in b12 folate b12 folate whereas in hypothyroidism transcobalamin cyanotic congenital heart disease you will have you will have you will have macrocytic non megaloblastic so the size will be large but no hypersegmented neutrophils in hypothyroidism transcobalamin cyanotic congenital heart disease the following are causes for recurrent bleeding in a child with the normal prothrombin time partial thromboplastin time and platelet count remember step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 step 1 is vasoconstriction step 3 is primary platelet plug step 3 is clotting factor step 4 is clot stabilization your pt pttt apttt and tt all measure step 2 and 3 whereas step 4 is due to collagen it can be qualitative or quantitative qualitative means it is scurvy quantitative means eller danler syndrome okay and step 4 is what step 4 is clot stabilization by factor 13 so here factor 13 scurvy eller danler syndrome and also in cushing's disease you will get because of increased steroid vascular fragility will be there so all are correct 
when you get recurrent bleeding with the normal pt apt ttt and platelet count think in terms of all these four disorders the most common cause for acquired sensory neural hearing loss is remember congenital is connection followed by congenital followed by torch infection the most common cause for acquired sensory neural loss is post meningitic sequelae the answer is a a 4 year old child presenting with fever of 2 days duration along with a respiratory rate of 44 per minute with chest traction child is taking fluids no stridor at rest saturation is normal the treatment of choice remember now the latest is non severe and severe pneumonia non severe divided into fast breathing pneumonia in which tachypnea will be there and the chest in drawing pneumonia for fast breathing pneumonia amoxicillin 80 mg per kg per day 3 days for chest in drawing pneumonia amoxicillin 80 mg per kg 5 days so no need to admit when you have danger signs like not taking feeds vomiting everything stridor at rest cyanosis you will have danger signs admit and you need to give ampicillin and gentamicin here apart from fast breathing for a 2 month old child more than 60 for 2 months to 1 year respiratory rate of more than 50 here child is 4 years so more than 40 per minute is called as tachypnea so this is fast breathing as well as chest in drawing the drug of choice is amoxicillin 80 mg per kg per day into 5 days we don't use cotrimoxazole nowadays who protocol says you need to use 80 mg ampicillin gentamicin only when there are danger signs here there are no danger signs so what is the answer b next Match the following respiratory sounds and sight of pathology. One snoring. Snoring indicates nasopharynx, or else I can say adenoid. Two stridor. Stridor is a laryngeal pathology. Wheezing. Wheezing is a bronchial pathology. rattling rattling is due to secretions in trachea and bronchus over very very important match the following asthma and drugs montelukast can be given after 6 years given after 6 years zafirlukast from 12 years in india we are not using thiatropium also thiatropium also from 12 years montelukast 6 months i'm sorry montelukast 6 months one second to avoid confusion i repeat montelukast can be given from 6 months omalizumab can be given from 6 years whereas zafirlukast and thiatropium from 12 years that's all so this is correct this is correct this and this for so this is the answer a 3 year old child with a recurrent wheeze can be treated with inhaled steroids via remember you will have meter dose inhaler that is your puff plus mask plus spacer in children less than 4 years more than 4 years you can use without mask dry powder inhaler can be used after 7 years rota caps nebulizer any age here the question is 3 year old means you need to use a meter dose inhaler spacer and mask answer a The following are features are 
of moderate acute asthma except remember whenever your child is mentally subnormal agitated it comes under severe comes under severe silent chest not able to take feeds agitated altered sensorium all comes under severe whereas high mild hypoxia inspiratory wheeze pfr all comes under moderate attack a known case of hiv patient is said to have pneumocystis carinae pneumonia the following are true yes pcp is characterized by tachypnea it is characterized by retraction it is characterized by hypoxia but pcp the chest will be silent because it is characterized by interstitial involvement next mask the following cough and character staccato cough staccato cough means what cough for each and every breath <laughs> this is called staccato cough what is called whooping cough <laughs> this is called whooping cough pertussis what is called barking cough altb psychogenic cough never disturbs sleep and it is honking cough in nature next question the following are causes for congestive cardiac failure in a 5 day old infant except yes your critical aortic stenosis will cause well coarctation of aorta will cause neonatal epstein's will cause remember your supracardiac tapc will not cause it is infracardiac tapvsc so the answer is d next choose the following congenital heart disease and syndromes bicuspid aortic valve is a feature of turners hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a feature of noonan interrupted aortic arch is a feature of digarch and finally branch pulmonary stenosis is a feature of charge okay match the following the following are major criteria for nadas to say congenital heart disease diastolic murmur yes cyanosis yes congestive cardiac failure yes but it is not grade 2 it is grade 3 and 4 your grade 2 comes under minor what are all minor minor grade 2 systolic murmur abnormal s2 abnormal x ray abnormal ecg abnormal pp these five comes under minor criteria the answer for this question is d the following is a feature of tetralogy of fallot tetralogy of fallot is characterized by pulmonary stenosis which can lead to ejection systolic murmur you have a large v and because of pulmonary stenosis you will have right ventricular hypertrophy because of your right ventricular hypertrophy you will get up tilted apex you have a large vst that large vst shunt murmur will be very low will be very low or usually not heard and the s2 is usually p2 is absent so a2 will be seen a2 will be single so s2 is fixed and split it is not fixed and split it is single and what you hear is a2 all others are correct or wrong let us see ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area no no ejection systolic murmur in the in the pulmonary area not in para pan systolic murmur in left to lower sternal edge that will not be heard also so the answer must be normal s1 yes, tetralogy of fallot two week old infant with severe cyanosis failed hyperoxia 
left axis deviation and without cardiomegaly remember failed hyperoxia means right to left shunt you will have tetralogy of fallot you will have tricuspid atresia you have total anomalous pulmonary venous connection okay you have tga remember except tricuspid atresia all are characterized by right ventricular hypertrophy tricuspid atresia is otherwise called as hypoplastic right heart syndrome so in tricuspid atresia you will have left axis deviation in mcq is very very important whenever a child is sinosed and shows ecg left axis deviation the only correct option must be tricuspid atresia tricuspid atresia okay x ray and congenital heart disease figure of 8 supracardiac egg on side tga massive cardiomegaly epstein's anomaly boot shaped heart tof bus very very important as per revised Jones criteria for acute rheumatic fever 2015, the following are minor criteria. Monoarthralgia, yes. Fever of more than 38, yes. Prolonged PR interval, yes. It is not 60, it is 30. Previously it is 60, now it has been reduced to 30. So answer is C. The most common cause for hypertension in children is renal parenchymal disease that is chronic kidney disease followed by followed by renovascular in which takayasu is the most common cause most common cause is chronic kidney disease second most common cause is renal vascular cause in the takayasu is the most common cause for Renal vascular cause for hypertension in children in India. For this question, the answer is renal parenchymal disease. Match the following. Call 4A mutation. You all know Alport syndrome. Nephrin gene is leading to congenital nephrotic syndrome. Antibodies to alternate complement pathway D minus hemolytic syndrome and finally tuberin gene you will get angiomyolipoma of kidney as well as heart leading to amateuria. Next match the following neurocutaneous syndrome angiomyolipoma you all know tuberous sclerosis spinoidal dysplasia neurofibroma 1 dental enamel pit again tuberous sclerosis intractable seizures sturge weber syndrome cerebellar signs von hippel because it is characterized by cerebellar hemangioblastoma over next risk factors for recurrent febrile seizures are all except Family history of febrile seizure, yes. Age less than 18 months, yes. Multiple seizure at first episode, yes. Seizure at higher temperature, no. Seizure at lower temperature. They will get seizure within 39 degrees Celsius. Okay, right. The triad of infantile spasms psychomotor regression and hypsarrhythmias this is west syndrome without tuberous sclerosis west syndrome can be associated with the tuberous sclerosis plus without tuberous sclerosis with the tuberous sclerosis means viga batran without tuberous sclerosis means acth if it doesn't work steroids the answer here without tuberous sclerosis, ACTH is the drug of choice followed by steroids. 
match the following meningoencephalitis theme meningoencephalitis in organisms temporal lobe encephalitis you all know herpes bilateral thalamic encephalitis japanese encephalitis subdural effusion is a feature of bacterial tetra hydrocephalus is a feature of tuberous tuberculosis neurotuberculosis next question most common ring enhancing lesion causing focal seizure in indian children is it is not tuberculoma it is neurocysticercosis followed by tuberculoma brain tumor with multiple cranial nerve palsy and ataxia is pontine glioma most common tumor brain tumor worldwide is astrocytoma most common tumor in india is medulloblastoma inborn errors of in metabolism involving gray matter with cherry red spot without hepatosplenomegaly is tay-sac disease which is characterized by exosaminidase a deficiency the following drugs are approved for spinal muscular atrophy through overall root through overall root nahi oral root what is that oral root the following drugs are approved for spinal muscular atrophy through oral root is what what so this is intrathecal this is iv and this is oral this deep plan is oral match the following flaccid acute paralysis Early bladder and bowel involvement is a feature of transverse myelitis. Albuminocytological dissociation. Albuminocytological dissociation means cells will be there, albumin will not be there. It is a feature of Guillain-Barré syndrome. Cranial nerves affected in case of poliomyelitis. normal nerve conduction is a feature of transverse myelitis okay is a case of transverse myelitis that's it next question the following conditions are associated with the neuroblastoma neurofibroma fetal alcohol fetal phenytoin friedrich Hirschsprung's answer is all. The following are poor prognostic factors in neuroblastoma: high ferritin, older age group (NMIC), whereas stage four is where what is called stage four is small primary with secondaries in skin, liver, bone marrow. but not bones but not bones this is prone for spontaneous regression so it doesn't come under poor prognosis one day old with respiratory distress with respiratory distress look here here you could see the diaphragm here where is the diaphragm and there are multiple loosen shadows here what is this congenital diaphragmatic hernia congenital diaphragmatic hernia very very important part two one day old with respiratory distress diaphragm is seen diaphragm is seen so this is ruled out i could not see any loops of ng tube inside the esophagus this is not there in congenital adenomatoid malformation usually presents with pneumonia but here look at this this lung is over inflated because of that the lower part is collapsed this is called congenital lobar emphysema 
congenital lobar emphysema a 10 year old with 10 days duration with weight loss so what is this x ray numerous small 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 spots what is this miliary tuberculosis miliary tuberculosis okay next one year old child with developmental delay look at this you have widening you have fraying you have cupping so what is the diagnosis rickets next a four year old with a recurrent uti look at this bladder is pulled and then what is this look at this what is this there is enlargement of ureter as well as pelvis what is this the most common cause for recurrent urinary tract infection is vesico ureteric reflex here ureter is dilated pelvis is dilated so this is stage 4 pur vesico ureteric reflex detected by micturating cysto urethrogram a 2 year old girl with the resistant seborrhea and lung infiltrates whenever you get say, resistant seborrhea involving scalp with the lung infiltrate with the osteolytic skull lesions think in terms of langer ansel histiocytosis in which cd1a and sn100 will be positive a boy with anemia hyperpigmentation and neurodegression anemia hyperpigmentation means p12 boy means x linked neurodegression something involving gray matter this is x linked adrenoleukodystrophy characterized by very high levels of very long chain fatty acid it is a peroxisomal disorder next the following is true about this circuit what is this this circuit is called as cpap in which inspiratory limb is connected to nose expiratory limb is connected to water to increase positive experience the expiratory pressure to reduce alveolar collapse during expiration so the answer is all right so so the answer is it increases peep cpap next identify the syndrome is we all know it is mucopolysaccharidosis here not that dysmorphic to say hurler or hunter he is very short he is very short with protruded sternum characteristic of marcus remember in marcus and maroti elame mental retardation will be very very less a 10 month old child with anemia and hepatosplenomegaly answer look at this bone within bone there is no medulla at all so what is the answer osteopetrosis treatment is stem cell transplant why macrophage is the problem here okay right modified bell staging is for necrotizing enterocolitis stage 1a 1b 2a 2b 3a 3b assessment for jaundice is cramer staging perinatal asphyxia sarnath staging and levin staging so answer for this is b essential criteria for perinatal asphyxia includes all except yes acidosis yes neurological manifestation yes multi organ dysfunction persistent of apgar of 0 to 3 for more than 5 minutes so this is not the answer
max the following neuro regression with the hyperpigmentation b12 a phonia thiamine circumcorneal congestion riboflavin neuro regression with the alopecia biotin very 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 important with this i am completing my one liners of our your fmg thank you thanks for your patient listening